Uh, thank you for agreeing to do this, Lindsay. You're very welcome. I was um, interested in speaking with you because of your position working with John, and it's completely out of my sort of bailiwick. So I wondered, how do you go about, as a young woman like you, getting a position like the one you have with the John Tory show? It's been a very long adventure for me to get here to Toronto. I've really had to work hard and I've changed jobs numerous times in the past few years. So since I went to college, which I graduated in 2005 in May, and then by the end of that year, I had my first job in radio in Kitchener, working afternoon drive, reading the news and doing a bit of co-hosting, but that was only a mat leave position. So when that ended, I went to Woodstock and did a morning show for a very brief time. Then I went to 570 News in Kitchener for a few years, learned every single job in that newsroom, then went to Wingham. And then from Wingham, I ended up in Barrie. And then from Barrie, I had a very interesting adventure that involved Charlie Sheen and social media. And now I'm here in Toronto. So it's a lot of jobs in the short period of time. What did you study in school? Broadcast journalism. You were able to get jobs in your field. It took me a few months, a lot of, uh, you know, you really have to try and, and apply to a lot of different things. And you get turned down a lot, especially it's getting that first job that's key. And my first job was absolutely amazing. It happened to be a union job, the pay was incredible, it's something that most people wouldn't have the opportunity to do, but I convinced someone to take a chance on me. And from there, I've never been jobless, and I think that's very important as well. I've gone from job to job, but never been without one, for now. Now, what inspired the interest in uh, broadcast journalism? When I was younger, I was in a lived in a really small town called Aaron, and we had a local newspaper. So as part of high school, we had to all find a co-op position, and I worked at the local paper. I'd always had an interest in writing. I was a very creative writer. I won awards, you know, through grade school and things for that. So it seemed like a natural fit, which kind of got the news bug in my genes. And then when it was time to go to college, I thought, well, let's explore some other avenues that I can use this interest in news. So I didn't just stick with the print, I took broadcast journalism, so that combined radio, television, and writing as well. Did you have relationships or early life experiences that inspired that interest in the news? Was someone supporting you along the way, or this is just an interest that evolved on its own? I've always been a very big people person. And so any job where I know that I would get to communicate with people, the thing that I loved about the news is, you know, it's people listening to me and they're reading my words or hearing me tell them the information. So that's what kind of got my interest in it. Other than my family supporting me, there was, there was no real connection to, uh, to get into the business, which makes it very difficult. In this business, it's often who you know. So once you get a job, those people and those connections can help you. I've never burned a bridge. All my former bosses, I would say, would rehire me back, which is wonderful. And they do. They help you through the rest of your career to find other positions. When I was working in Barrie, I was working on an FM afternoon drive show. So I was a co-host. It was the John and Lindsay show. And uh, a big, huge part of what's going on in radio now is social media. It's, it's now not just what's going on the radio. You have a website. You're trying to get fans on Facebook and Twitter. And through this time, Charlie Sheen put out a call that he wanted an intern. And all you had to do to apply to be his intern was send a tweet. So it's 140 characters. And from there, 80,000 people did that. And so I made the first cut. And so from that first cut, then you had to kind of fill out a little questionnaire about why you would want to be his intern. And I made that cut as well. So each time the number is dwindling down a little bit. And then you had to make a video submission. And then I made it past that as well. And I ended up out of about 80,000 people being somewhere in the top 50. And I believe there was only about three people in Canada that made it to a, a certain part in the journey, I would say. And so I just got a lot of media attention from that. And I really used it to my advantage, is, is how I would say it. I mean, there was nothing I didn't do. Any little radio station that called me across the country, I did an interview with them. It didn't matter what time. I drove to Toronto several times from Barrie to do all the major papers here. I was on the uh, major news networks, and then eventually CNN. So from all of that different media experience, I didn't end up getting the position with Charlie Sheen, but I did an interview at this radio station with uh, More in the Morning, the morning show guy. And there's a 
a job forum for people in radio called Milkman Unlimited. And I saw a posting, an opening for a producer here. So I sent the audio of my interview with John Moore, and I, that helped me get in the door here. And from there, convince them that I have applicable experience. The job I'm doing now as a producer, I've never done before. I've always had kind of on-air news positions, so it's completely different, but applicable experience and you know, willing to work really hard and try something new, and here I am. Did you see applying for the Charlie Sheen position as being risky? Did you feel you were taking a risk? Huge. And in the end, I was, you know, people kept asking me, do you really want to work for this guy? And I kept thinking about it. And at the time, he was going through that downward spiral where he, where he was posting all those videos and he, he seemed insane. He really did. He didn't seem like he was in his right mind. But, I mean, it was still an opportunity for me. My name was out there. And it was definitely going to be a risky adventure if the opportunity came where I would have to decide to take the job. I would say I'm not sure that you want to be pegged as Charlie Sheen's intern for the rest of your life. How did you know what to do? I just, uh, media experience, um, you know, being in this business, I understand the game of it a little bit. And this is, I guess this is the way I phrase it as, Stories have a very short shelf life in this business, even if it's a major story, a hurricane. For example, Hurricane Sandy, that was something that happened pretty recently, and we're not really talking about it anymore, but there's still people affected by that. So the shelf life on my stint with Charlie Sheen, it was going to run out. So you kind of have to make the most of it in that time, and that's what I knew was very important. As long as people were asking me to talk about it and following me along this journey, I was definitely going to go along for the ride, and that's just, it's just something that working in the media business, especially in news, you realize that, that there's only kind of a short time when this is gonna be relevant and you definitely, you can't buy that kind of exposure to be on CNN, you know, it's very rare. It would, it's on my bucket list to have an opportunity to be there. So anything that I was asked to do, you have to do it. Tell me about any important role models, mentors, champions, sponsors you've had in your life. My dad would be my biggest role model. My dad uh, was a milkman when he met my mom. And I mean, he recently just became a consultant as he's kind of winding down his career, but eventually he was the president of a major marketing and sales company. So I see hard work and I see how that can pay off. And he's really instilled those values in me. He's also a huge people person, very outgoing. I would remember when we were kids, we would go on bike rides and just how he would talk to strangers. And it's something I kind of have picked up in life, even in an elevator, you never know who you're going to meet. So being outgoing, it really taught me a great life lesson and I've carried that with me forever. Anyone else? Um, I mean, one of the people I would consider my mentor would have been my first boss who gave me my very first job in radio. Always when I have decided on a job change, I go back to him and he's there for me to talk about this, to see, is this a good time? Because I have changed jobs a lot and often when you look at somebody's resume who has switched jobs, that can be a bit of a risk for someone new taking you on and I do realize that. So all of my moves, I have to really look at them and think, is this the best move for me at the time? Some jobs I've only worked at for eight months, some a little bit longer, but it's nice to have somebody who works in the business and understands what you're going through and just always have that connection where you can talk to them about those kind of things. Any uh, women in your um, industry that you see as uh, providing a role model for you? You know what's interesting? We have a news director now who's a female. I have never had a female boss, and I, do, I don't work in the newsroom, so she's not my boss, but her name's Kim, and she is extremely inspiring. And she is such a great people person, and I think she is a wonderful role model for you know what I would like to be. She's now in a management position, and in this business, it is very male-dominated. As I said, I think it's a little bit odd. I've never had a female boss, and I would like to see that. When I'm looking at myself, you know, I would like to be one of those people. What is it about her behavior or her style or whatever that you find particularly inspiring? The thing that I love most about Kim is she is just such an open, wonderful, nice woman. Sometimes in this business, people seem very unapproachable. They get to a position where you've been on air for a long time and you kind of have a bit of an arrogance, a bit of an attitude. You're in the media business. Your name is out there all the time. It sometimes just comes with the territory. People develop this. Kim is not like that at all. I see that she has developed a very strong team and everyone listens to her. It's, 
you know, it's a team mentality in there. It's not an I mentality. And that's very important when you're trying to lead a team, a news team of people where you don't know from day to day what stories you're going to be sending people out on and what they're going to be covering. And I think it's very important that everyone trusts her. And I would say she seems very trustworthy. Have you received any advice you found particularly valuable or inspiring? There is kind of a motto that I would live by, and I would tell this to especially young women entering this business, and it would be dress for the job you want, not for the job you have. And I've always lived that, and I think it's, it's carried me through pretty well because I find that in this business, it's a lot of young people that I and I'm working with still at this time, but if you can ever do anything that sets you apart a little bit, that helps you, and it will help you get noticed. It will help people remember your name. So that's the one thing where, you know, someone always told me it's if you have something going for you, whether it's being outgoing, whether you're funny, whether you're good looking, always play up any kind of strength that you can. And I just find that I'm not going to want to wear jeans around the office all the time when I'm working with somebody like John Tory. You know, yesterday you go and talk to the prime minister. It's very important, I think, to look the way that you want to be and not necessarily the position that you currently hold. Do you have a network um, and if so, how did you develop it? Do you have, I call them networks of support. Do you have that? Definitely. Definitely. It would include my family as well as former co-workers and definitely all of my former bosses, which is absolutely wonderful. It's nice to know that all of these people, if something happened where I lost my job. It's very nice for me to know that I actually have people I could turn to who would help me, help me support me or, you know, introduce me to new people. And I'm meeting new people all the time in this business. Again, it's very social. I almost call the media business incestual. Everybody knows everybody. So it's very important to not burn a bridge. And I think that I've done that pretty well and carried through my connections all through this business. And how do you maintain them? So you've left Wingham or you've left a small town somewhere. How do you maintain connections that diverse and that far away? I always keep in touch. I definitely find that that's very important to reach out every once in a while. Not just an email, sometimes like a handwritten letter is nice or a phone call to somebody. And now with social media and the way that this whole world works, it, there's no excuse not to. But it's important to always check back in with those people, see how they're doing, because their jobs are changing all the time too. Uh, my boss in Wingham is now out in Calgary. So if something happens out there, I now have a connection in Calgary where during the stampede, for instance, you know, maybe we'll want to do a story there and he can help connect us to that. So I, I definitely keep in good, close contact with a lot of my different connections. Would you be able to articulate for yourself, in your own mind, what you want in your life and your career? I think about that all the time. And I would say my goals have definitely changed because a few years ago, I was in the mindset that broadcasting was it for me and that I would see myself either anchoring the news, whether it be on radio or television. And now I'm in a position where I'm on air sometimes, but not all the time. And I see roles like as a producer or possibly working in public relations. If I could pick one path, it would likely be to stay somewhere within the broadcasting industry, but I'd love to see myself reach somewhere management or brand director where I have a little bit more creative control over the station and coming up with ideas and definitely working with people. As long as I was working with people, that would be something I'd be very interested in. Personally, hopefully, you know, someday get married and maybe have kids, but the career is definitely my, my first priority right now. What do you believe some of the critical factors are for you to achieve what you've just articulated you want? Definitely working hard, keeping those connections that we've talked about. It's, it's very important to maintain those specific relationships with different people because those are the people that are going to help you get to those positions. You never know where you could end up working and I think that that is definitely very important. One thing I wish that I would have done, I do only have the two-year college diploma. And if I could further myself by taking any type of management courses, that's something that I'm looking into right now, whether I'll have to do it on evenings or weekends, or there's something I can do, you know, a two week thing where I, that's how I use my vacation. I think that that would really help me along on this journey of things that education is very important. I do wish I had more of it. I don't regret the route that I've taken because it has gotten me somewhere wonderful. But I do think that sometimes people look at 
a resume and think, oh, you only have a college diploma and it would be nice. So that's one thing where I think that would really help me if I could somehow take some kind of a management course and further my education. What's next for you? Hmm. As of right now, uh, career-wise, as of right now, I'm working with John and I haven't, I've only been here since July of 2011. And as I've switched jobs a lot, I kind of want to see where this one takes me. I'm always open to new opportunities coming into my life, but uh, I would hope that within this company, I would possibly get a promotion, I would say. Something a little bit where it, it does have a little bit more responsibility just outside of producing. Whether that's kind of an assistant program director or something like that, those are opportunities that I'd really like to see myself meet those goals and then take those a little bit further. What question haven't I asked you that you thought I might? Hmm. Did you read the book? <laughs> <laughs> no. Other than that, um, I don't know. I didn't come in here with too many expectations. I had no idea what this would be, but yeah, I don't think there's anything. You're a, you have a core of wisdom in you. I don't, where did that come from? Are people, you aware of it? People tell me I'm an old soul and I feel like an old soul. I definitely do. I've always gravitated with people that are a little bit older than I am. It's always something that I've had in life and I, I do feel that in myself. Yeah, it's right there. Anyways, it's a pleasure, Lindsay, it's a pleasure. Thank you so Thank much you. for this opportunity. I really appreciate it.